What's up guys, I'm Shannon Aikow, Counts Customs. Check out Bill's Cool Projects on YouTube. Take it easy. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be part six of the Tesla Super Beetle convertible conversion. So this is gonna be an electric vehicle at some point in time here in the very near future. But anyway, parts one through five, I did a complete restoration on it. Took it down the bare metal, sandblasted everything down to steel, and then built everything back up. Took care of some of the cancer, uh, some of the rust spots, but uh, totally restored. Also replaced all the low voltage wiring in there with a uh, GM fuse block and such. But uh, looking pretty good. Uh, the next step is to build the battery boxes, and here I've removed the front gas tank uh, out of the vehicle. And this conversion, I'm not going to be cutting metal or anything. I'm going to use existing mounting points like for the fuel tank and uh, mount the battery box to it. It's going to have six Tesla S or X battery modules in it, so about 32 kilowatt of power. One box is going to go up here in the front, and up there you see, if it's light enough, uh, the fuse block uh, that's been all replaced. So all the original crappy wiring ceramic fuses and this Volkswagen been replaced with modern silicone wire and, and again a GM fuse block. And then the rear battery pack, so three batteries up front and then there's going to be three in the rear. The battery box in the rear is going to bolt right into here and be flush mount like with this little increase in angle. And then in the motor goes in the rear, it's going to be a uh, Hyper 9 motor which is a permanent magnet motor, 120 horsepower and 200 foot-pounds of torque from one RPM. So most gas engines, most diesels, uh, you have like 200 foot-pounds at 2000 RPM. An electric motor, this is gonna be 200 foot-pounds at one RPM all the way up through, I think it spools at about 8,000 RPM. But uh, anyway, it was 10 below last night, quite cold here in the garage. <coughs> And we'll have to get out to the uh, the heated garage and build the battery boxes and take care of the contactor box. And then this is going to be modified, but this is going to be the Type 2 J1772 charge plug. That's going to go into the fuel filler cap here. So open up the door, plug the charger in. It's going to be pretty slick, so I need to chop the back of this out and modify it and sink this back in so it clears better. But... Uh, Anyway, check out my playlist for my other solar projects and uh, EV projects and diesels and gas motor hot rod builds. So it was about 11 below last night. Very cold. Let's go get in the heated garage and get the battery boxes built and uh, let's get to it. Here's the steel cage that I made out of one by one tubular steel, all welded, fabricated together. And then uh, this is one inch and then I have half inch here that provides the, the drawer slide outs. And here's the Tesla batteries. I've got three of them in the module. Check this out. I finished up the fabrication of the battery cages and uh, I have all the mounts for the bolt-in application. So again, there's gonna be three batteries under the hood in the front or the front, whatever you wanna call it on a Volkswagen Beetle. And then uh, this is gonna be the uh, battery box that goes behind the seat, behind the rear seat in that space on the uh, Super Beetle. But uh, I made everything so I'm not hacking the body. Um, this total conversion, electric conversion of the Beetle is going to be reversible. So this cage actually has the mounting bolts for the original gas tank. And then I have a tab on here uh, that has an L bracket that I fabricated that goes down onto the uh, the front mount the in the front of the gas tank. So. Everything uh, can be taken out. I'm not hacking any steel, but uh, the battery modules, three in the front, three of the Tesla S or X uh, modules go in the rear. They slide in like a drawer, slide in and out. So put one in, put the second one in, put the third one in, and that completes the pack. Um, I also welded a plate here. Uh, this is gonna be a mounting plate for the fuse. There's a high voltage fuse um, that's going to go into each of the packs. Um, it's going to take the positive into the fuse, positive out, and then through my quick connects. Uh, 
into the main system. So that's the high voltage. But uh, I have a nice little plate here. After I slide the batteries in, I'll bolt the fuse holder uh, down onto that plate. But do a walk around. Turned out really nice. One inch tubular steel. And then these are half inch uh, to create the drawer slides. But uh, ready to go. Next step is to sheathe it. Oh yeah, also. The other thing I did to ease the lifting of it uh, with the overhead uh, lift or uh, an engine lift is I put a riv nut down in here that goes into this metal and I have an eight mil bolt uh, that goes in here. And then after I get the sheathing on to cover up everything, I'll cut a little slot in here. And this is just a tie down off of a trailer or a truck bed, whatever you wanna use it for. Good for, I think it's like 800, 900 pounds. And this will slide down in there. The bolt will go through it. Then I'll have a lift point, one on that side, one on this side, so I can put a strap and lift these in and out. After it's done, these, I weighed this, this is about 30 pounds. Um, this, I'm calling it an impact cage too, in the event of an accident. It's going to give the battery some protection, but uh, so I'm figuring about 30 pounds for the box, the cages, and then uh, each battery module. These are about 50, 55 pounds. So at the end of the day, total weight's going to be about 180, 185 pounds, somewhere in there. So these lift points are going to come in handy uh, to lift it in. And the nice thing is I have a convertible Super Beetle that I'm working with, so I could just have the top down and drop the battery box right down in from the top. Um, other conversions of sedan beetles, um, you gotta get like five guys or so to lift almost a couple hundred pounds up in behind the back seat, uh, crawl in there and, and do all the lifting. So it's quite the chore, but this is gonna make it easy having a convertible. All right, the cage is all done and painted. I was able to cut all the sheet metal that's going to clad the outside of the box. Uh, I got one, two, three, and then the other pieces there. But uh, they've all been drilled, and I like using these Clico connectors. I know they use these in the aircraft industry quite a bit. But uh, what they do is you just drill an eighth inch hole where you need your panel to be, and then you take your plier. Let's see if I can get it here. Put it onto the Clico and then push down and it removes it out of the hole. So just do an eighth inch hole to what you're doing. Pop it in, remove it. It uh, works really good and then once you have everything lined up where you need it, I have four, four corners, uh, then you can drill the big rivet holes. I'm going to use rivets and I have these large head rivets I like using. They're a little bit stronger than a traditional pop rivet and I think they look really nice. And then before I rivet, I'm going to use seam sealer, uh, a sealant, uh, to go all the way around the perimeter and around the, the notches that I made for the mounting brackets. So when this is all done, these boxes will be totally watertight. Well, the battery boxes are all covered and uh, all the lift attachments are in place here. It's going to make it real nice. The only thing I need to do now is put the face plate on to the front. And that's with these two pieces of quarter inch ABS plastic. I wanted an insulated material because this is where the high voltage connectors are going to be mounted. And also my BMS 25 pin connector is going to go in here. So that'll work really good. Um, next step is to drill all the holes. There's eight holes around the face. And I'm going to use quarter 20 rib nuts which are right there. Um, basically kind of like a pop rivet, it squashes into the metal and then gives me the ability to put a bolt through, which will be here, uh, quarter 20 bolts holding the face plate on. So that's the next step. So the rib nuts are all in on each corner and the Allen bolts, quarter 20s, stainless steel ones are installed. This worked out great. Next thing is I need to drill the holes for the high voltage, negative high voltage positive, and then also my big 25 pin connector for the BMS data to come off of the battery cells. Took the covers back off, they fit great. 
the next thing is to put the high voltage uh, quick connects on. So uh, these are amphenol and has a push button. Um, it goes into the part that you mount into the panel. And then on the back, you just crimp that onto your two watt wire. Pretty simple that they make these a real easy disconnect for the high voltage. Um, so one will be negative and then I'll have one beside it uh, that'll be positive. I was able to get my friend to engrave a couple of plates for me uh, for the battery packs. This is the front pack, so Tesla's battery module, 150 volts. This is going to be cell 1 through 18 on the BMS, and then this is the rear pack goes behind the seat um, inside the car, and that cells 19 through 36. So I like to label on everything, so somebody has the car in the future, it's pretty self-explanatory what things are. So one of the last steps in getting the battery, the Tesla S batteries ready for the battery packs is to replace the BMS board. So the BMS is a battery management system. It's going to monitor all the voltage of the cells. You don't ever want to go 4.2 volts per cell. Um, so this is a proprietary board that ties into the Tesla computer. Um, and it is replaced. This is an aftermarket board that basically just gives you a wiring connection into the ribbon cables which connects to all the cells and also the uh, connector for the uh, two thermistors that are in there for monitoring the battery pack temperature. So the board conversion for the BMS has been done on all six of the batteries and uh, special thanks to EV Racing who supplied the batteries to me um, and also the boards came from Amp Revolt and uh, Zero EV. So uh, I'll put the links in the description for all the suppliers I've used for all the bits and parts um, on this project. But uh, ready to go. The only other battery, which is interesting when you build an EV, is that uh, you have your main Volkswagen battery, which is usually about a 40, 50 pound lead acid battery that's that big because you have to run the starter to start the engine. So you need the cranking apps, right? So I don't have a starter anymore to start my dinosaur juice motor. Um, what I could do is put in a smaller battery. Um, so I'm going from a 40 to 50 pound battery to something this small and lightweight. And also I can mount it upside down, sideways, put it anywhere in the car I want. But this is a 20 amp hour, total 100% usable 20 amps, not like a lead acid or an AGM battery where if it's a 20 amp, you can only use it, you can only deplete it 50% before you start damaging a battery. But this is total usable 20 amp hours. And uh, that'll replace uh, the big honking battery. Um, I still need 12 volts in the car to run all the lights, the radio, the stereo. Also, uh, the 12 volts DC controls my contactors for the high voltage. Um, that's all run off of 12 volts. But uh, really looking forward to that. A uh, little project too on the side here I'm doing is that uh, people wonder about actually having heat in a Beetle Volkswagen, which that's the wrong thing to say because usually there is no heat. Uh, the original heater in a Volkswagen, uh, they blow cold air since an air-cold motor, uh, blow uh, air over the exhaust, and there's a heat exchanger uh, that runs into the car. So you're literally taking the hot exhaust heating the air up around it, and then putting that into the car, potential for carbon monoxide and all that. But uh, anyway, that's all gone now. So uh, I'm just going to an electric heater. Uh, what I did is I bought a conventional gas motor, diesel motor, heater core type blower heater um, that usually has the hot water in, hot water out uh, through a valve to control the heat level. And I bought this on JEGS, so I sized it up to a high voltage heating element um, that I sourced in England at Zero EV. Again, thanks to Zero EV for providing this. Um, and what this does is it goes up to, I think it's 225 or 250 volts DC. I'll be running about 150 volts DC into it, thus the, the high voltage wires is orange, um, just like any EV high voltage in this car. All the cables that are high voltage will be orange. But uh, so I bought this first and then I was going through the catalog and I found on JEGS, um, who supplies auto parts, 
a blower unit where I could take out roughly the same size heater core and replace it with the electric element. Uh, the beauty of this is this is going to be in the front of the car under the wheel well in the front uh, by your feet and provide nice lots of nice hot air and it's instant hot it's just like hair dryer as soon as I turn this on it's putting out heat I don't have to wait for the Volkswagen to heat up the exhaust pipe and then throw hot air through the side channels that are typically on a Volkswagen pan and heat those up and then eventually it gets to the front of the car and uh, you try to do some defrosting with it. Those of you who have owned a Volkswagen Beetle in the wintertime, you know exactly what I'm talking about, scraping the ice off the inside of the windshield and really no heat for 15, 20 minutes to speak of coming out of that car. But this is going to be nice. So one of the creature comforts of doing an EV conversion is, again, getting rid of the big lead-acid battery, going to a lithium battery, um, and then having instant heat in the wintertime is just beautiful. All right, the conversion is done. Again, I bought this heater blower unit on JEGS, which is an auto parts supplier, and it had the original water core in here for the radiator fluid from an engine come in and out, and then it has the blower. So again, I was able to get the uh, heating element from Zero EV in England, and uh, did some cutting on the inside, actually a lot of cutting on the inside. Brought the uh, wires out, this is the high voltage wire. The next project is the contactor box. Got all my pieces laid out here and uh, start laying this out, digging into it. So as long as it's super cold outside, um, again, here in Colorado, we're like minus 10 last night again, minus 12. But here in the heated shop, a uh, chance to get all the components made. So I think that's enough content for now. I'm waiting on the BMS harness to come in, which will plug into these connectors on each of the batteries. And also the main BMS, I'm going with an Orion BMS, which does auto balancing of the cells rather than like a dilithium type unit, which I had looked at that does manually a manual balance of the cells. But uh, I'm really looking forward to getting that in. But if you're building an EV project, allow a lot of time for the parts to come in. It just takes a long time to get stuff uh, these days. But uh, at least I got the battery boxes all done. And then I do have the net gain permanent magnet type motor, which is similar to a Model 3 uh, Tesla. And that's gonna be 120 horsepower. And it's like 200 foot pounds of torque. This is a high voltage Hyper 9 um, that'll go up to 180 volts. I'll be running about 150. And then on top, I'm all set. Just got in the uh, light and flywheel from EV West, um, which is really nice. I have a light and flywheel instead of the big honking Volkswagen flywheel. And also the motor adapter, um, motor controller. But uh, slowly the parts are coming in and uh, we'll take it up from there in the next video, which will be part what are we up to? Part seven now. Uh, this was part six. But uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you have any comments on stuff I did wrong, stuff I did right. Uh, any questions you have, if you're going to tackle uh, one of these projects, let me know. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.